How old are you? 103. What does it feel、yeah. like to be 103? It's awesome. I never know what's going to happen. Things have happened that I could never have dreamed of. And the most important moment of my life is this one. Well, what do you think has、uh, contributed to you getting to almost 103 years old and still being as active and healthy as you are? Being able to let go of the stuff that doesn't matter. My mother was.、Uh, My, I guess, my greatest teacher. My mother called it "kuch purwani." Doesn't matter. You let it go. You take what's coming towards you, and just you know, you can hang on to it and punch things around it, or take it in your hand and just let it drop and say "kuch purwani," or it doesn't matter. What are some things that you think reduce our lifespan? It's getting stuck and not having something to get up for, not reaching for life. If you're reaching for life, life reaches back to you. But if you're not, you're stuck. Every day, having something to reach for is so important. That's powerful, right? Because a lot of us have dreams, but don't place importance on it inside of us. A lot of us don't have any meaning or purpose attached to what we're doing. We have chosen to do certain things for miscellaneous reasons, none of which, for the most part, have anything to do with purpose or meaning. And so we're kind of sifting through life, and we're not happy, and that's that's the reality that we have. So you say that an answer to this could be in community. It's important for me to have a close community who are the ones that we can share our dreams with, the、mm-hmm. ones we can really reach to our true humanity with. We're not alone in this world of ours. We're not alone, and we recognize that. There are people who are suffering. You can get caught up with the suffering, but you can also be a light for that person that is suffering, and do something that might make them laugh. Or I don't know. It's not my job to tell you what to do. It's your job to find out what to do, because you have it within you. What gives you your juice? You found it because you connected with other people, and you're doing the thing that makes you. You wouldn't be doing this if you weren't in bliss when you're doing it. Yeah, but why work so much doing something that you're not passionate about? I, mean, I guess that's the, that's the eternal question that everyone's asking themselves. The people who are suffering with that, I, I, my heart aches for them. That they、um, are stuck, but you don't need to be stuck. You know, you just have to have somebody that can reach out to you, or you can reach out to somebody who finding something. That makes your heart sing. That will allow another person's heart to sing. I'm curious on your thoughts. Why do you think that so many people in their twenties are so stressed and unhappy? Because we, in our older years, are looking at life as something that you have to get over. Or it's a drag. It's, it's hard. And we present life to our younger people as drudgery, and then we wonder why the children are really hurting so badly because、mm. we've dropped the ball. If we keep on understanding that life grows,、mm-hmm. you don't just get over life. You know, if you live through it and understand the lesson that that particular process, then. Life becomes amazing. But for example, when you graduate university now, the next step is get a job, and、yeah. and you basically you're in your early twenties. You're tasked with getting a job. More often than not, you know, for most people, that job is a desk job. And so now you're spending the vast majority of your still youth, when your brain is still developing, you're spending most of that at a cubicle. How do we navigate that? Yeah, I've kind of. Come up with five L's, okay? First two are life and love. They have to work together. They can't work without each other. So life and love are essential. And see, I think we've forgotten that, and we have not taught our children about love. And a lot of these kids just don't know anything about love. The third L is laughter. The laughter is something that is. Inherent within us, and as we allow ourselves to laugh, we gain happiness and we gain joy. We find that, 
It's the love that brings that into it. Laughter without love is cruel, it's mean, but with love, it's happiness and joy. And the fourth L is labor. Labor without love, which is what you're talking about, these crude, you know, is drudgery. You have to go to work. You have to get yourself into that spot and become who you and what you have to be. But labor with love is bliss. It's why you do what you do. It's why I do what I do. It's what makes the singer sing. It's what makes the artist paint. It's that inner core of our being that knows what that is. And then the fifth one is listening. Listening without love is empty sound. You can hear it and doesn't mean nothing. It's just ding dong, whatever. But listening with love is understanding. Now, how do you have the instinct that when something negative happens to you, you do think positively? How do we make that a natural instinct? We're looking over our shoulder into the darkness back there instead of forward into the light. And if we're going to keep looking that way, we're going to get a stiff neck. And boy, it's going to be hard to see anything else. We need to keep moving and shifting and reaching for the light. When I was just reaching 70 and my husband asked for a divorce, life had totally shattered at that point. It was worth nothing. I grabbed the little glimpse of what was there. There wasn't much light there, I'm telling you. It was total darkness, but all of a sudden I paused long enough to take a deep breath and say, okay, I have to do something. Life is so amazing. Every day teaches me something new. If you could give one piece of advice to anybody younger than you on living a good life, a fulfilling, meaningful life, what would you say? Find what you love and love it to pieces.